Hello everyone, Bahamar here with episode 9 of Let's Mod Reboot. In today's episode we are going to go over some very basic blocks. So in the last episode we touched on items. Today we're going to do the block side of things and you're going to find it's going to be uh, fairly similar. Um, to start off I just want to note that I have now updated to the latest version of Forge uh, that is available as of the time of this recording which is 1170. And one thing I want to uh, mention to you guys, and I've seen some people in the comments um, with a bug. Um, so what's happened is recently Forge Gradle has had an update um, to fix that sounds bug uh, that I showed you a fix for in episode seven and a half. So I just want to show you this. So this is a brand new updated uh, Forge 1170 uh, workspace that I regenerated the um, the IDE workspace with my Gradle W idea uh, line. So just to show you what I did. So if we come into the edit configurations for Minecraft client, you'll notice that we no longer have program arguments. And that is because uh, Abersed and Lex Manos, sorry Aber if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, um, have added this Gradle start class as opposed to the old launch round or launch wrapper. What that means is that you can just run this and uh, you can run the uh, idea or eclipse targets in your forge Gradle um, terminals there and it'll generate everything it needs to in the back end. So you don't need to worry about setting those asset index or the assets directory. That's all fixed for you. So don't be surprised if you see program arguments empty. Um, things should just work now. So with that out of the way, let's talk about blocks. Close that, okay. So last time, let's just bring this up, okay. So last time I showed you the idea of having a generic item class, uh, your first item that would extend that, and then the idea of this mod items class that uh, contains all of your items. Very similarly, we're gonna do it for blocks. So because we don't have a package, a bucket that uh, these classes nicely fit into, I'm going to add a new block package. And inside a block, I'm going to add block, let's mod reboot. I'm going to make sure it extends block. Very specifically block, not blocks. And it's going to complain because there's no constructor. Okay. So when it came to creating this generic item, the constructor was as simple as saying super. Because an item, the constructor, if I can find it, Okay, I can't find it very quickly. The constructor for item doesn't take any parameters. However, for block, it does. Let's see, block. Go through that stuff, okay. So block actually takes a material as its uh, parameter. I'm gonna show you something I'd like to do differently here, okay. So block, public block, material, material, super material. Let's just import that. And I should actually name the constructor appropriately. So here's our constructor. Block LMRB, it's going to take in a material parameter, and it's just going to call the super to create the block here. So what is material? Material is the different things that blocks can be made of. Um, predominantly, this is used only to set the map color, uh, whether it's burning or various other parameters in here that you can see from the material class. Um, for the majority of the time, you're probably going to make your block of a, one particular uh, material. Uh, and stick it with that. So for example, if I were to make a machine, I may make it of material, um, let's see, what's a good one? Iron, 
anvil if it's a metal related thing. If it's like a furnace, then I would make it out of uh, rock. I believe stone is an option in here. Anyway, you can see the list of options in here. So, the other thing I like to do is public block lmrb with no parameters. And I'm actually going to say make it of type. You know what? Let's see if there's no, there's no stone. It's just rock. Okay. So what this means is I have now have two constructors here. I have a constructor where I can manually specify the material, or I have this empty constructor here, um, empty by, I mean, there's no parameters, and it will make uh, an instance of this block, and it's going to be of type rock. So here I can be very specific as to what it's going to be. Here it's uh, very generic. So um, we'll get into why that's useful later when we start making other blocks and, and whatnot. It just gives you a little bit more control and it's honestly kind of just a lazy thing to do. Um, so let's see, what other things? And of course I'm going to come back to my handy dandy uh, Clone Exchange 3 where I've done this sort of stuff before. Okay, so I just wanted to show this here. Um, so right now if you happen to be looking at the Equivalent Exchange 3 source we're going to ignore this code here. Uh, this code we'll get into when we start dealing with tile entities and inventories. All we need to worry about for the basic um, generic mod block class is um, setting the name, setting the texture, which you'll notice is something that we do in the item class here. So very, very simple. So while I'm talking about that, why don't I just because I, there's no point in just rewriting this stuff for the sake of rewriting it. And I'll remember to do that properly. Okay. So, in the item world, you'll notice that things are, uh, I told you about how an item is, let's do this, okay. So in the item world, when it deals with how to find an item, it does this. Uh, item name, name. Okay. This is the format for an item. Yeah, for what Minecraft looks. So it denotes it's an item, your mod ID, colon, the name of the item, dot name. And that's how it knows how to find things like its texture. That's how it knows how to find things like its uh, translation. Very similar. Blocks done this way. Tile dot mod ID block name dot name. And so that's why these methods look very similar. Uh, the only difference is, is the tile. So there we go. I, uh, this probably looks way faster considering uh, what we did last time. Um, but the principles are very similar so there's no point in uh, beating a dead horse if you will. So let's add our first block. Uh, block, um, what should the block be? What's a very Canadian thing? Block, um, maple, uh, no, maple syrup's a liquid. That would be silly. Block, hmm, block flag. Let's just make a solid flag block. I'm gonna make it extend block lmrb its constructor block flag I'm going to say super uh, that's it and let's see this okay one thing I want to touch on here for setting the name. So I'm doing something very simple here, similar here. Uh, if we were to look at these, I'm calling the super and I'm setting the name. When it comes to blocks, you're going to want to use set block name because as you can see, there is no set on localized name or localized name, it's set block name. So we'll call this a flag. Okay, so similar to last time, now we need a texture, so I'll be back in a moment with the texture. 
Okay, so as you can see, I've just decided to reuse my maple leaf texture, except this time it's got a white background, so that it'll look properly, proper on a block. So let's see, I think all I need to do now is add the localization. So tile, let's mod reboot, flag.name equals Canadian flag of awesomeness. Okay. So once again, very quick, we've got ourselves our generic, um, our generic block class. We have a class that implements it with our first block. Now I'm going to add a mod blocks class. Public static. Let me just bring this up for a comparison. So you remember here, we create an instance of the block of the item, and then we register it. So we are going to create a instance of the block. And then we are going to register it. So game registry. Register block, we're going to register flag, and the name flag. Go back to our mod class, and where we have mod items in it, now we will add a mod blocks on it. And if we were to run Minecraft, We load up our world here. And if I were to use that give you can now see we have two options. We have maple leaf and we have flag. Here's our flag block. Isn't it glorious and beautiful? Here's one I want to sh let's see, let's get a map. Yeah, let's just turn off the sounds entirely. What I want to show you... Okay, you see that line of gray that's forming up? Those are blocks there, and that is because we said they were of material uh, rock. If they were to be any of the other materials, you could control what color they are. But that's really, truly um, the biggest thing. Because uh, you can over always override whether or not these are um, uh, flammable and, and such like that. So that is really all we need to get our very first basic blocks in the world. They don't do anything. They're just textured blocks. Um, but why don't I show you a couple other things you can do. So with items, I didn't really touch on this before. Items, uh, you for example can control. If you ever want to find out what you can control, always look at the parent class. So item. Uh, in here you can control the max stack size. So I saw one person asking how could I say that the max stack size is only one. Well, for your item here, you would say something to the effect of this. Max stack size equals one. And now if you were to have multiple leaves, they wouldn't form up into one collated stack. They would actually be a whole bunch in a row. This is how you get things like tools to not stack. Uh, same as saying what the maximum damage is. So that's how many uses it has. That's how its durability is determined. For blocks, you control things such as... Uh, and let's actually look at some of the Minecraft blocks. Uh, let's do that. Okay, so here is, this is actually all the vanilla blocks being registered. So here you can see things they set. So for example, you can set the hardness. So that is uh, basically how hard it is to break the block. You can set the resistance. That is how resistant it is to explosions. You can set the step sound. Uh, so that's the sound it makes when you're walking over it. 
as well as then uh, you can set the block name and uh, I guess I should show you this set block texture name which is um, set block texture name uh, for simplicity sir, uh, just set it to the same name as the block itself so this just tells Minecraft this is the this is the the texture name for the block that is let's see other than that you can set the creative tab and we're going to go over creative tabs in episode 11 uh, that's actually a very simple um, episode but this is your basic block setup uh, later on I'll show you how to uh, associate tile entities with the, your blocks as well as how to have inventories for your blocks so for example a chest um, and actually really I should explain how tile entities are related to blocks because you may be jumping ahead so a tile entity is simply a block that has more information saved to it uh, a normal block just has its name and uh, it may have a, uh, a meta value um, that's not a lot of data to go on. You can't store an inventory in that. That's where you get the idea of tile entities. Tile entities allow you to specify extra data to be saved on a block. Um, so for example, a chest. Uh, a vanilla chest has a tile entity used to store all the data for the block as well as it has the block itself that defines what it looks like. Um, I realize that's probably kind of a teaser. Um, but if you're looking ahead in the Minecraft code, look at block chest and tile entity chest, and you'll begin to see how those are related. But um, we're going to get into that in episode 15 and 16, tile entities, and then uh, subsequently inventories. Uh, but for now, let's see what else I was going to show you. Oh, yes. The other thing I was going to show you is the idea, pardon me, of this thing here, object holder. And let's do our handy-dandy comparison here. So this is something that's very handy from FML. And what it does is it specifies, let's do this first so I can concentrate while I talk. Okay, so we do this for blocks and we do this for items. What this does is it um, so when you register your blocks and your items, what it ends up doing is it registers them inside of a FML um, registry that stores all the data related to blocks. Uh, so this will have it know what name it is and it'll associate a dynamic ID number to it. What object holder does is it says this is an instance of this object for my mod and I want this one preserved so that if I ever want to reference it again, I don't need to worry about another mod tinkering with it. That's a very high level uh, understanding of what this is. Um, this came about um, because some mods would actually tinker um, through registry lookups, uh, not registry, recipe lookups and everything. They may tinker slightly with item damage values or NBT data on item stacks and whatnot and it would kind of throw off what you had um, as your reference object so game registry object holder and you specify I should have explained this you specify your mod ID as an argument for this class annotation that says to FML okay these objects are mine I want you to register them as mine and I want you to preserve them so that if anyone else attempts to tinker with them um, they tinker with their version of them and I still have my own. Very high level and Minecraft CPW is probably going to correct me for, for not being 100% accurate so I apologize CPW. Um, the short of it is this is good practice. Uh, this is very good practice in your mod blocks and mod items classes just because if later on in your code you will be referencing these objects um, specifically when it comes to recipes. So it's very um, it's a nice bit of insurance, for lack of a better term. So, I think that is everything I wanted to talk about today. Uh, so, to recap, um, we've created our generic block class, similar to how we have our generic item class. We have our first block. We have created a texture for it. We have created um, an entry in the localization file for it. 
we have added our initialization class for all of the blocks we'll be doing. We've initialized our first block and we've registered it. And then we made sure that our main mod class in the pre-init event lifecycle of the mod initializes those blocks. Um, things left up to you guys to try. Try playing with the various things like, uh, let's see, um, set hardness is one, uh, set resistance is another, uh, and let's see what might be another fun one for you. Um, you know what guys, just go through the list, here you go, you can actually set the light level, so you can actually make this uh, block uh, mid-light, uh, this will take a float uh, between 0 and 15, anything higher than 15 it'll just register its max light, max light is the 15, zero light is zero. Uh, as well as set step sound, It'll, that'll take a sound type, um, and it's, uh, I always forget this, it's always best to look into the Minecraft block class to see the various options for that, so. That is episode 9 of Let's Mod Reboot, next time we are going to be going over recipes, uh, so for that I'll show you how to make shaped recipes, so it has to be in a particular uh, arrangement, shapeless. And I think we will touch on um, Forges or Dictionary recipes, which allows you to say, um, you know, I want to allow any bl uh, wood plank to be used in this recipe, rather than this one specific one. So uh, that is the next episode. After that, we will uh, dive into Creative Tabs. Thank you guys again. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying the series still. Um, please, if you have comments or criticisms or uh, you're happy with how things go, let me know in the comments or let me know on Twitter. Uh, if you have any problems, um, please feel free to paste in your code and your crash logs uh, into the YouTube comments. Um, or just use some sort of site where you could save a large amount of text and it's a single link because uh, it can go quite big because um, there are some fantastic people who are watching in the comments and they're providing all kinds of helpful um, tips and helping solve problems as well as there's people in the IRC so uh, this is Palmer signing off and uh, we'll see you next time take it easy <laughs>